All that we've uh, missed of this fifth frame is the break-off shot and the first reply safety. Jimmy White certainly looking a lot more at ease now that he's uh, safeguarded his top 16 status for next year. A weight off his mind, that. He made uh, one unforced error in each of the first two frames and promptly found himself 2-0 down, but he clinched the third with a run of 64 and he had breaks of 51 and 70 in the fourth. So he's hitting the ball pretty well. Peter Ebden started the season 10th in the world rankings, but uh, will end it third or fourth, having appeared very consistently in the later stages of tournaments this season. He's been in four semi-finals, four finals, but the only one he's won is the Malta Grand Prix, which was non-ranking. Although he did beat John Higgins in the final. similar type shot that Jimmy White potted in one of the earlier frames and when you're knocking this type of shot in you've got to be queuing so precisely so he's given himself an early chance here. Eight. Fascinating battle and prospect between Jimmy White and Peter Ebden. careless there he might have got a bad contact 16 yeah he's having the cue ball clean so he didn't come back to leave the red into the same pocket that he took the black but there's still a possibility potting it in the corner pocket coming back for the black it's worth the risk wouldn't be leaving anything on Confident enough to play it at pocket weight instead of a little harder, hoping that it would bounce clear if he missed it. That could have worked out a lot better. 24. There is a red on into the right middle pocket, but he's canning into another couple of reds. He's just checking to see if the pink would be available. It's obviously very tight. Jimmy's having a look at from both ends. 
But if he can get onto the pink, he might go on through for the blue here. Main thing is to pop the red. 25. Thirty-six. Thirty-seven. As you travel up and down the country playing exhibitions, the question everyone asks you, can Jimmy White still win the world championship? Everyone would love this man to take a world title. But as each year goes by, it gets more and more difficult. 42. 42. But the way he's been queuing in the last couple of frames is very promising. 43. White 43. He left himself a shade more to do with that black than perhaps he should have done. And knowing that uh, he should have had an easier shot, he played the black itself rather tentatively. Had he been two or three inches closer to it, I think he'd have potted the black and gone into the bunch at speed. Got to be a little bit careful here, Peter. He can play a back down the table, but got to be careful not to send the red towards the black. Oh, that could be a useful little nudge on the brown there. Now, there is a gap for Jimmy to get through to the red that's up by the blue, and I think it pots past the black. He may take this on, stun the cue ball over past the pink and back over onto this top cushion. It's a tough shot, but if it comes off, with the way the balls are placed, it could be a frame winner. Yes, and if no other ball moves, no other ball goes, if he misses it. a little bit of white magic there, Clive.
Eight. Chance to clinch the frame now. Nine. Seventy. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. Jimmy White continues to cue well. He cued pretty well in the second session of his first round match against Ewan Henderson. Until uh, it came to the panic of actually clinching the match. He was three up with four to play. But was caught at nine all 39. before taking a very nervy decider. Forty. But he's just touching them nicely today. Yes, Clive, I expected Jimmy to play very well in this match because there was so much pressure on him to win that deciding frame against you and Henderson to stay in the top 16. That meant so much to Jimmy. And I think he's relaxing a little bit in this match and we're seeing the pure genius of the fellow. 48. Yes, the length of the match, I think, has got something to do with it. Best of 25. 55. The staple diet of the circuit 56. is best of nines, where the end is in sight not long after the beginning. 63. That was a bit careless, but much too late to make any difference. Oh. Jimmy White, 63, and the break. So breaks of 43 and 63 give Jimmy White the fifth frame and the lead for the first time at 3-2. Back here on the stage he loves, it's given him some disappointments, but it's given him some pleasures. Six times he's been in world finals. He knows he should have won two of them two years ago. He missed uh, a black from its spot in the deciding frame against uh, Stephen Hendry and lost 18-17. And then uh, four years before that, he was 14-8 up on Hendry and lost 18-14. And those defeats really knocked it out of him psychologically. And uh, he took a long time to get over them the following season. Sixth frame, Jimmy White to break. But Jimmy's got a, a tough gentleman on his hands here and Peter Ebden, who started this match in terrific fashion with some super long potting. Jimmy has applied the pressure and uh, 
It's Peter, who's just struggling a little bit, but he hasn't had many chances in the last few frames. Oh, well, having trapped a Ebden into a mistake, White misses a comparatively easy ball. Under the cushion he may have been, but a player of his class should pop that. Now we shall see the class of Peter Ebden. He's been kept quiet for three frames. Let's see what he can make of this opportunity. One. He needs to reassert himself now, having lost the last three frames, scoring 36 points in total in that period. Twenty-four. Mental strength is Ebden's strength. A good player and an even better competitor. Twenty-five. off the loose reds to 32. perfection. Gonna have to start looking for an angle on a color to bring a few more reds into play. Thirty three. He hasn't got the perfect angle here to go into the reds, I don't think, but he can get nicely onto the loose one. Spotted something on the black ball this time. Forty. 
red to middle. Angle on the blue to open the bunch would appear to be the sequence. Red to corner, maybe. Excellent pot. Chose the more difficult shot. But he's got the ideal angle on the black now to go into the reds. Start a little bit better for Peter. He only knocked the one red towards the middle pocket. The others have stayed fairly tight together. And it's not easy to pop the one in the middle pocket and get good position on the blue to take him back to the reds. It all depends whether he's straight on that red into the middle pocket. Just managed to get above the blue. Request from Ebden for the referee, John Williams, to clean the cue ball. Yes, Clive, I've played Peter a couple of times this season, and uh, he does tend to like to have the cue ball cleaned on quite a number of occasions. You talked about Peter's mental strengths, Clive. He's just proving you right here. Jimmy White in the previous three frames has had breaks of 64, 51, 70, 43, 63. 61. And Peter Ebden, with his first opportunity, has replied with this 61 break. And there may be more to come. Still a few balls from the winning post, though, in this sixth frame. This blue and uh, one more red, though, would leave White needing a snooker. Blue 
67. Didn't strain to keep ideal position on the black. It would have been better if he'd played the pot with a little left hand side on the cue ball to spin the cue ball off the cushion and not leave such a thin clip. Peter Ebden, 68. But uh, he didn't want to risk missing the frame ball pot. <laughs> 68 in front, 67 on the table. Ebden leaving it to White to open the bunch. Well, I thought he would. I'm bound to say I thought that Ebden would have played safe off the isolated red the shot before because what White needs to get back into this frame is a, a sequence of red blacks. But he must have had his reasons. Well, it could be very interesting now. That was a slip up from Peter. And if Jimmy White can take four reds, four blacks, one, he could still be in with a reasonable chance in this frame. doesn't have to take blacks Eight. with each of the reds. Nine. But he'd probably leave the red as closest to the pink there. He would leave that to the last. And then he would have a good chance of snookering in behind the pink, but that's 16. five shots away. Well, I think the angle he has now, he'll have to play for the red that's closest to the pink. Twenty-four. He's still all right, though, because he can lay the snooker from the red behind the black. Twenty-five. And he could even take the last red and the colour and go down and play the snooker in the yellow. So there's, there's a few options available for Jimmy Whitehairs and this frame is far from safe. and believes there's a snooker coming up. Jimmy White, 31. But White didn't play it very well.
should have had the cue ball tighter to the black. It may be. No, he doesn't have to swerve. Was unlucky though, just the flick off the brown kept the red in the open for Ebden, otherwise, it was a snooker. and just ricocheting the cue ball away from that red. He was able to do that because the red was tight on the cushion. Couldn't think of anything except the pot. One. And that last red gives Ebden more than enough extra insurance. This is the last visit of this frame. Seven. Nine. White uh, won't uh, come out of his chair. Okay. Peter Ebden, nine on the frame. Although, in fact, uh, White. Uh, is leaving the arena for a few moments, as is Ebden. And uh, that gives us uh, a chance to talk about the prize money in this uh, World Championship. Already, these players, by winning one match here, are sure of £16,000. If they win, then they can increase that to 30, And then it uh, goes up almost doubled each time until the winner gets uh, 200,000. Of course, we've had some pretty big rises over the years. I don't know how much it was uh, when you won it, Dennis. I think it was around 60,000 pounds, Clive, but I'm just thinking back to when Alex Higgins won his first world championship back in 1972. He had to pay 100 pounds to enter it and picked up prize money of 460 pounds. So there's a slight difference. Yes, and of course, going a long way further back, uh, the very first uh, World Championship, the first World Final, that is, in May 1927, Joe Davis won the princely sum of six pounds, 10 shillings. Peter Ebden returning to the arena. He did something rather interesting in an exhibition at the police club in Eastbourne the week before the championship. He made two breaks of 147 in the same evening and I can just picture the constabulary sitting there thinking hello 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 what's all this and uh, he almost made a third maximum in, in the last frame of the evening he got to, to 13 reds 13 blacks I bet they give him a few coppers for that uh, Clive. <laughs> well they should have done anyway he's actually made uh, two maximums in competition he made one in his first professional season in the very 
first frame of uh, a first round match in uh, a then ranking tournament called um, the Strawn Challenge. He made a 147 from his opponent's break off shot at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning at Aldershot, which uh, I doubt will ever be done again. And uh, he also made a 147 in the pre televised. Uh, stage of the UK Championship uh, four years ago. And the gentleman coming into the arena made a maximum break here, Clive, a few years ago and picked up £100,000 for it. But what a match we have in our hands here. Clive, you mentioned in the previous frame or a few frames ago how many times the player made contact with the blue off the break off shot. It's happened again. Amazing, really. How many frames in their life have they broken off? They should have it right by now. thin on that, a little thicker and a different angle around the cushions and uh, Ebden could have left white behind the blue, that's what he was trying to do. I think Jimmy's got a little bit of blue in his eye as well here, Clive. Not perfect, but okay. Well, the reds have opened up nicely, but the pink and black are tied up. Well, this will take a little bit of sorting out. The blue's off its spot up the other end of the table. So very awkward here. Q power of Jimmy White again. Very few players in the game can <laughs> create that type of Q power. Yes, yeah, all done with timing, not uh, just bludgeoning force. The secret of a power shot like that is to have the Q travelling at maximum acceleration as it goes through the ball. It's a little bit like watching the top golfers applying backspin to an iron shot. Yeah. Rumble. Jimmy White won. Turning down the brown in favour of trying to get in behind the blue. Still a perfectly adequate safety.
failing to make the requisite thin contact. That's another terrific shot One. from Jimmy White, freeing the pink. Lots of reverse side to take the cue ball up the table. It's as if the white stops, then bites and spins back. Years of practice. done with the, the cue ball running on further to take a straightish red to middle get on brown or preferably pink <laughs> screw shot with rest maybe the best With the rest, white is the best. Five. Tried to force back off not the most promising angle. Hasn't really extricated himself from his positional difficulty. Rumble. Jimmy White, five. One. Very accurate with his positional side of that shot. With very little margin of error. Just watch the cue ball avoiding one, two, three, four reds. Pinpoint accuracy there. Yes, the first two in particular. Seven. Eight.
40. He can still get through to a possible red to right corner. Just the problem when you run slightly out of position, it tends to continue for a couple of shots. Uh, He's still not in the ideal situation here. The red will go into the corner pocket. Right corner past the other red. Well, he had a little bit of safety in he mind. He would have been nicely on the blue had the red have gone in. He thought it would probably be safe if he didn't pop the red, but it's over the pocket for Jimmy. I think the pink's in. Well, Jimmy just indicating and acknowledging the fluke, but believe it or not, Peter Ebden got an identical flute, Seven. fluke in the, one of the earlier frames. Eight. It's not just the fluke, of course, but what you can make from it. In some sports, Tennis, for instance, you have an outrageous bit of luck and it only wins you one point, but in snooker, you can go on and win the frame from it. 14. Eight frames to be played. In this session, three sessions in all, best of 25. And it's nice when you get to four frames because you know in your mind that you can't go to the next session behind. White intended there, I think, to leave a better angle on the blue. Having developed that red when clipping the pink in, perhaps should have made better use of it. to middle as it may be. Green ball. Jimmy White, 22. But he didn't fancy it. 
and decided to settle for the snooker. Jimmy will be hoping to take the white up behind green and brown here. An engrossed front row at the crucible. So they should be. This is uh, a good match. There's never quite the atmosphere in an opening session that there is in a final session when the issue of who wins or who loses comes sharply into focus. Wow. But there's a lot to admire, a lot to get interested in as the plot gradually thickens. This may look an easy pot, but uh, the tricky little shots along the cushion. Eight. Doesn't miss many with the rest. One of the best in the business. Jimmy White eight. Just overcut it slightly. Played it very cleverly though. Blocked the pocket. the red next to the black. One red absolutely tight to side cushion. If it was just an inch or so off, it would be easier for Ebden to control sliding the cue ball down to the ball cushion behind brown and green, but I think he still can do that. Chance for Jimmy to knock the red onto the black and take the cue ball back around the angles towards the brown.
Peter have played the same shot? Can he judge the strength? A little bit better than Jimmy. Caught it a shade thicker than intended, leaving the red near the middle pocket than he wanted. Clive, this will bring the house down if it comes off. Oh, a long way from the red. And if ball it's a free ball. Peter Edwin Ford. Well, it's not a free ball, but uh, Peter will put him in again. <laughs> yeah. He'll have another go at this, I feel. Okay. Got to be careful not to go in off the red, but uh, he could pot it. As it happens, he's left it, but uh, Edwin still has it all to do in this frame with uh, the two other remaining reds in safe positions. Interesting to see how Peter Ebden goes about this. The pinks over the pocket, so no problem with position. Although he's using an extension, I'm wondering if he'll attempt to pop this red and screw around the angles and try and bring one of the reds into play. didn't give that one much thought it looks as if it's going to have to be the pink lots of side on the cue ball possibility of m moving one of the reds Attempt to develop a red fails. This, this frame in total contrast to the previous three or four where we've had quite substantial breaks. It's more of a tactical frame, but one that's just as important. Yes, you have to be good at all types of frame. The fast flowing, all potting or break building type of frame. The fragmentary bits and pieces mostly tactical type of frame maybe Clive they're both getting a little bit of practice here for their next opponent the winner of this match will take on Steve Davis and there'll be plenty of tactical play from that gentleman who's the best in the business at it. <coughs> Chance here for White though. the red and get uh, an angle on the pink hoping to move the other red
it all across the pot. Certain similarities between Jimmy White and Steve Davis. Both of them came to the Crucible with only one quarter-final appearance in the season's preceding nine world ranking events. Davis definitely got his game together for Snooker's biggest challenge, the World Championship, and there are signs that White has as well. Good chance for Jimmy now to get the cue ball back around the angles in behind the green and brown. <laughs> I think he might be a little bit unfortunate. There's a gap between those two balls. Everton forced back down the table behind the ball line off an almost straight potting angle. Foul and a miss. Peter Ebden, four. He was very close to the red, but the referee has to call the miss because Jimmy isn't snookered on the red that's by the black. Peter probably won't bother having the ball replaced. One. If he can leave the cue ball on the right side cushion, just to the right of the green there, he would get a snooker behind the Bravo. black. be trouble again. <laughs> Clever shot from Peter Ebden. He played the double on the red, but he knew he was still going to have the snooker, even if the double didn't go in. lot of problems here for Jimmy White. Foul. Peter Ebden, four. Four points to Peter Ebden free for ball. the foul and a free ball. But I can't see any real advantage here with the free ball. No, no colour that uh, Ebden could nominate as an extra red can gain an obvious advantage. Jimmy in again but it's a straightforward snooker to get out of. 
Jimmy could avoid the blue there and just knock the red back up the table. And that's why Peter's thinking to see if there's another shot available. Nominated as extra red. <laughs> this frame now at the 31 minute mark, but it will end sometime, and uh, coverage of the touring cars race will follow. Frames have been fairly fluent here. Frame times, we've had 18 minutes, 13 minutes, 17 minutes, another 13 minutes. This is the longest one so far. But a mere sprint in comparison with uh, yesterday's fair, Steve Davis v Terry Griffiths, which uh, averaged more than uh, 33 minutes a frame. We had a 60 minute frame. A 56, a 54. Fascinating stuff, but it did take a long time. Chance for Jimmy White. A bit too thin a contact there on the red. He's left it on for the corner pocket. Often happens after a protracted safety exchange. But the first decent potting opportunity looks just that little more difficult. That's a bit careless from Jimmy White there. Just playing the red twice across the table to leave it on this top cushion. He knows he's made a mistake. It's a thin one, but uh, Peter Ebden can snick this into the middle pocket. One. 
every chance of uh, taking the frame now. Peter's already three shots ahead, just figuring out where he's going to put the cue ball when he plays position onto the difficult green. He's got the perfect angle on the yellow. Seven. Pot it and drop in behind the green. Will he play to move it? Nine. Spot on. Green and brown would be sufficient to leave white needing a snooker. Resigned to losing this 37 minute frame. Sixteen. Twenty one. Easily the longest frame of the match. But uh, Peter Ebden has won it. 34 and uh, leads Jimmy White by four frames to three. Well, a long testing frame. What happened to Jimmy White's reputation as being a fast player? It seems that the world win was quite literally petered out in that last frame. It's Ebden that leads four frames to three, and we'll be back for an update on the final frame of the session in just over half an hour's time. But because well, where we've just had that, that inquiry scheduled for five o'clock this afternoon over the allegations of a Ronnie O'Sullivan has in fact been put back to eight o'clock this evening. That's at the request of Ronnie O'Sullivan's legal advisor. So the inquiry into the allegations of assault on a WPBSA tournament official will now be at eight o'clock tonight. We'll obviously bring you news in our programmes later on. But we're now heading out for live snooker this afternoon. Let's once again go out into the arena here at the Crucible. And as always, we're here from the man making the introductions, Alan Hughes. L Ladies and gentlemen, first to table number one, and it brings to the table last year's world finalist and the newly crowned British Open champion, who is cool, classy, and looking to go one better than last year, and how well he kept his composure in a tense first round battle against Anthony Hamilton. Ladies and gentlemen, from Darley Dale, will you welcome, please, Nigel Bond? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, his brilliant opponent, the pride of Thailand, tough, tenacious and extremely dangerous. He's defeated them all in his time at the top. And he comes to Sheffield this year, ranked the fifth best player in the world, with a titanic task this afternoon. Will you welcome, please, Thailand's number one sportsman, James Watanar. <laughs> And now they come to table number two, and it brings to the table a flamboyant young star full of self-belief and many people's fancy for the title, who five years ago arrived with a striking personality, a ponytail on a cue. The ponytail has gone, but this young man is here to stay. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Welling Butters, Peter Ebden. <laughs> Thank you. 
And ladies and gentlemen, his opponent, everybody's hope for the title, and the six times world finalist has so, done so much to bring snooker to the heights it's reached today. Unbelievable, unpredictable, it's all part of the chemistry that makes him such a joy to watch. Can I ask you to welcome back again for another tilt at the title, the whirlwind of London town, Jimmy White. <laughs> Interesting atmosphere, shall we say, for this afternoon's matches. James Watt and I, 12 4 down to Nigel Bond. That match played to a finish this afternoon, but we, of course, are concentrating on the second session of the match between Jimmy White and Peter Ebden. And to guide us through it this afternoon, Dennis Taylor and Clive Everton. Thank you, Doogie. Good afternoon, everyone. Ninth frame, Peter Ebden to break. And uh, a vital session this is for Jimmy White who lost in the first round here in 1983, but every year since has reached the quarter-final or better. Middle session of a best of 25. seeking to make good a two-frame overnight deficit. One. So from White's loose safety, leaving the cue ball out of Bork, Ebden knocks in that long red. While the focus may be on Jimmy White, Peter Ebden is focusing pretty well on his task. He always brings enormous mental intensity to bear on his matches. placement for the bridge hand and Peter Ebden immediately drawing the referee's attention to the fact that one of his fingers touched a red. Jimmy White won. Well, I've known Jimmy White take those very difficult blacks on, but um, refused it and has kept the frame safe here. Foul and a miss. Jimmy White four. Be interesting to see how Jimmy handles this match this afternoon and what sort of tactics are you as a very attacking player but if he can put a few safety shots together keep Peter under pressure it should be very interesting
Yes, arg Ebden arguing against himself here, having the cue ball pulled back an inch or so nearer the balk cushion. Well, that's Foul and a miss. two misses. Jimmy White five. I'll tell you one thing, if Jimmy has it put back, Peter Ebden will make contact with the red this time. We just uh, seen earlier Ken Doherty lose a frame with three misses. Okay. Right. It's a time you don't want to miss Q now, Clive, isn't it? I think he's going for the thin edge again. I think he was attempting a thinner contact the first couple of times he played that shot, hoping to get behind blue or yellow. But he knew he could make sure of hitting the red and getting back to Bork, even with a half ball contact. Albeit with no real prospect of putting White in trouble. Jimmy White's natural game is an attacking game. But he's an excellent safety player when needed. Yes, I think all the natural potters and break builders have to learn to develop that side to their game as they get a little older. Whether Ebden takes this on or not may be governed by whether he can get the tip to the middle of the cue ball. That blue was slightly distracting, even so. This may look to be a good chance for Jimmy. The reds are perfectly placed, but the colors are very awkward. Blue safe, black safe, and the pink at the moment. Surrounded with a few of the reds. He's got a little bit of sorting out to do here. One. Just a little bit short of pace there. I was impressed with Jimmy's game uh, yesterday. Cued very well, very smoothly. <laughs> His highest break was 70, but he, he put three frames together where he looked in excellent form. He did, Dennis. The only snag was that uh, 
he got bogged down in two Three. very long frames at the end of the afternoon lasting 69 minutes between them and lost them both to go from three all to five three down four Played for the brown there you have to take the green now into the centre pocket. But he could do with coming up and getting onto the pink within a couple of shots. That would help the situation. got the red into the left corner pocket it's just the the red that's closest to the white that's causing a slight problem for him getting nicely on the pink right has he left it short eight yes he certainly seems to have done pretty tight positional shot that afraid of coming too far to the right Jimmy Whitey so for the moment he has to be content with the 14 point lead from these fragmentary opening exchanges occasion Ebden's queuing wasn't quite up to the power he needed he almost hit that red the wrong side to get the pink back on its spot possibly with an angle to come close to his next red an important opening frame to the session White needing it to reduce his arrears to a single frame The red just to the right of the pink there is causing a few problems for Jimmy.
50. Couldn't get on the pink from that angle. Now, it could be rather unfortunate. He screwed the cue ball into the one position he didn't want it. Can't get to the two reds. It's on for the right corner. There you see it. Where best to put the cue ball with his safety? Very thin cut in. It's been rather unfortunate again. You would think he was playing safe off that, but uh, he's very good at snicking them in, Jimmy White. But as you'll see, where the cue ball's finished up, no colour available. Jimmy White, 19. That's pretty good play, though. If the red that he played hadn't gone in, he was still leaving the cue ball safe. His safety behind the blue was good enough to demand a good shot from Peter Ebden, a very Thin snick back to the bulk area. It had to be to avoid the left hand corner pocket. Possible pot here to right corner. Blue obviously available. he didn't get it there was always the chance that uh, he was going to leave something for his opponent Peter Ebden played uh, very well yesterday, though he didn't make any of the big breaks that he did in the previous round. He had a 144 break, 138 in his first match. His highest break yesterday was a break of uh, 68, but he was very solid. A little bit edgy from both players in this opening frame this afternoon. You may have heard a gasp of exasperation from uh, Ebden, which might have been directed not at himself, but to kick that he appeared to have there. The object ball certainly went very straight on that attempted thin cut.
Not a bad outcome, though. Only one potential hiding place for the cue ball in the Bork area at the moment. So in this safety exchange, both players having to rely entirely on length. Jimmy still keeping to his safety tactic. He's already could have taken on, but uh, refused. Only problem here, he's left a gap through for the one near the right corner pocket. And the audience uh, for this match doubled at a stroke as the curtain has been raised in the middle of the arena. The match on the other table having finished early. Yes, Clive, and that'll help both players now. No distractions coming from the other table. This has turned out to be a very good chance for Peter Ebden now. Ebden concentrating fear. He takes it in full. He'd be three frames ahead. thought about yellow or green but settles for pink twenty seven <laughs> Jimmy will be a little bit anxious, but uh, he'll know that Peter's still got to play a couple more good shots. I think Peter was just thinking whether possibly to play for the yellow off this last red. But it looks to be almost straight. He's got a slight angle to work with here.
think he attempted 28. to get onto the yellow. Now, can he get past the green for the yellow? Or does the green pass the yellow? Green ball. Thirty-one. The cue ball's got a long way to travel now to get ideal position from yellow to green. But if he does, Ebden should win the frame. Well, I thought he might attempt that off three cushions, but by using a huge amount of left-hand side, he tried to do it just with the one. He was hoping to get just past the blue. Still not too bad, though. Still a good chance. Not perfect on the brown, but just brown and blue needed. Jimmy White the plane, the leader, the leader. 27 in fragments but Peter Ebden cleared to the pink with 51 to win the frame and go three clear at 6-3 a little bit tentative, but in the end, at 6-3 rather than 5-4. Stephen Hendry's with me. How significant is that, do you think? Um, well, I mean, obviously, it's not, it's not the end of the match, but uh, I think Jimmy had two or three good chances in that frame, and uh, you really have to keep the pressure on Peter um, because he, he's, he's so strong when he gets in front. He can, he can just roll over it, as he did in the first round. It's interesting, isn't it, because Jimmy's had such an awful season. I think he's played 13 tournaments. Hasn't been in a semi-final yet, never mind a, a final. And yet this place, hopefully, from Jimmy's point of yeah. view, will inspire him. I, I think winning the first match against Ewan Henderson, you know, ensuring his place in 16 would have taken a lot of pressure off him. And he looked great yesterday, and, and I thought it was, you know, a bit unfortunate to be 5-3 down. But um, as I said, you know, you have to take your chances and, and put pressure on, on Peter's long pot. And uh, he missed a couple there. He, he starts to hit the ball quite hard when the pressure's on. And, uh, you know, Jimmy has to keep the pressure on him, but you know, if he's if he's going to miss chances like that, you know, it just increases Peter's confidence. Yeah, and from Peter's point of view, he's such a consistent player. He's in another yeah. good season, hasn't he? Up to four, I think, provisionally. But he's not really as big a winner as you might expect him to. Well, be. he's not. He's not won the titles uh, this season, but um, there's no doubt. You know, he's going to win titles. You know, lots of them because he's been in, I think, four finals and so many semis. He's always there or thereabouts at the end of the tournaments, and he's and he's so dangerous. Um, and so confident in his own ability that you know he'll always be a danger in every tournament. Mm. All right, well let's go back out then and uh, take a look at the second frame of this particular session. Jimmy White now 6-3 behind and the confident Peter Ebden who remember was in such excellent form in the opening round beating Dino Kane 10-1. He's also had a 1-4-4 which is jointly the highest break of the championship so far along with Tony Drago. A little bit tentative in the opening frame. Let's see how this one pans out once again with, uh, with Dennis and Clive. Yes, as Doogie said, no semi-final in 13 tournaments this season for Jimmy White. 
and only one quarter-final in the preceding nine ranking events. Excellent long pot from Peter Ebden, but he shouldn't have really had the chance. It wasn't the best break-off shot from Jimmy White. You've got to get that white tight on the cushion, because when Peter Ebden gets his confidence, that's the type of shot he knocks in. Nine. Well, you did see the white jump there, and that's the reason it's <coughs> gone over towards the side cushion. So this needs a good pot. Needs a little bit of power to get position. Seventeen. Peter's the sort of player you need to stick with him and keep close to him. And now that he's opened up that three frame lead, it's going to be interesting to see how strong he comes on here. Twenty-two. Too far for his intended red to left corner, which he could have played with a hand bridge. Has to play this with the rest. Still easy enough. Twenty-three. Well, it's not straightforward here. <coughs> Might have to play a little cannon off the black because just looking at it, uh, not easy to leave a a red on. So it might require coming off the top cushion and. Just into the reds. Well, he's playing for the single one, I think. But he's got to be very accurate with this. 30. Uh, has he gone far enough? 30. I was a little bit careless there. I thought he might have gone into the pack that time and just disturbed a few of the reds. Yes, the trouble started when he didn't get on his intended next red. Peter Ebden, 30. There would have been quite an easy sequence for three or four shots had he done that.
very good length of the cue ball, but is there a gap through to the red that's near the right corner? <coughs> Yellow might just be stopping Peter from potting that one. Yes, that one appeared dead straight as well with Ebden playing from only an inch off the ball cushion. He's in a spot of bother here, so we may have to try and just bend it a little bit around the yellow. Moved it at least. black pots well as you can see the red's touching the black so no way Jimmy can pot that one yellow, yellow ball <coughs> Jimmy white one Peter Ebden's reached two quarter-finals in his uh, four attempts at the World Championship. In his first year, on his debut here, first match, he beat Steve Davis. come through this match he would meet him again in the quarterfinals Red right of picture so close to the cushion that the double kiss is an obvious danger. That's a possible shot back down the table, but uh, Peter's playing the, the single red on the right. He's got to be careful about the double kiss here. Yes, between the devil and the deep there. Too thick and it was the double kiss, too thin. And uh, cue balls into the jaws of the corner pocket. One good positional shot 
from Jimmy White. The four reds are all available. He's got quite a way to travel with the cue ball to get up to them. going to be difficult to pot the red and get good position. Jimmy White for Not that easy. And not a bad outcome anyway. do very well to get out of this uh, snooker. He can hit the red, but uh, it's going to be very difficult to get it safe. And that'll be a miss. Foul and a miss. Jimmy White four. Just trying to clip off the side of the red. have another go. He's trying to just clip off the side of the red to the right there and try and take the white onto the top cushion. Very, very difficult shot. Foul. And a miss. Jimmy White, four. So third time lucky. Any number of misses permitted if the player is snookered. Jimmy White, four. Jimmy will have a look to see if he can get to the red into the middle pocket, the one that's near the pink spot. He's got the other one straight up into the corner pocket. So he may not have it put back this time. Good chance if this goes in. I'm surprised he played it dead weight there. Sometimes the ball can just drift a little bit when you play it at that pace. I thought he might have just punched it a little bit more. One. So a gift for Peter Ebden here. Not as straight as he would have wished on his next red. But the one right of picture appears to be a simple drop in and bounce for black. Prefers the other one though.
14. The theory was there that uh, even if when he cannoned the cluster nothing came out, he was bound to be on either red to right corner or red to bought pocket. But he's left himself bridging slightly awkwardly. Twenty. I think the blue would be the best ball to play position on here to get towards the reds. Twenty one. Well, that wasn't a very good positional shot from Peter Ebden. I think he was trying to leave himself an angle on green or brown to get up to the reds, but he'd like to have that one again. Yes, he was trying to make sure he left an angle, didn't want to finish straight on the brown. Peter Ebden, 21. Well, he's going to be very fortunate here. Missed the pot on the blue by a long way. It's rebounded and he's fluked the snooker. Very fortunate there. Hebden leads by 34. Peter looks pretty cool, but Jimmy there looks to be under pressure. He's offing the old brow quite a few times. controlled pot well it looks as if uh, Jimmy White's Eight. going to get another chance Peter didn't regain position on a red there you can see there plenty of points left on the table but will Jimmy White get a chance Peter Ebden eight. Ebden pushing on towards a 7-3 lead which would be a threatening deficit for White. Uh, 
Now, if that red is not potable into the left middle pocket, the one that's just off the cushion, Peter might have a go at this red into the right corner. Yes, if he'd potted that together with the colour and one more red, and it would have been available to left middle, that would have been enough. One. It's still a little awkward here for Jimmy White. He's now looking to see if that red is available. But the natural run through would take Blue white one. possibly onto the pink. If he can avoid the pink, he would be okay. Still not bad. Six. Tricky little shots into the middle pocket here, so he's got to give this due care and attention. Seven. Tried to nudge a second red towards the pocket, but hasn't uh, improved his position in that regard. Jimmy White, 30. Reducing his deficit to 29. Couldn't do much with that, Peter. Just had to hit it and hope to knock things safe. <coughs> Jimmy freeing that loose red, the one that was on the side cushion. So the ball's all in potable positions now. You know, I think he can get past the blue to this red. He's having a go at this one. <laughs> Missed it by a long way. But hasn't left anything easy. Well, we've seen Jimmy White cut some terrific pots in in this match so far. He could do with one here. The thin cut fails. Ebden comes to the table, 29 in front. Potable red to corner. Blue probably next. And then a route to clinch the frame.
Well, there's a little bit of pressure on Peter to knock that one in. He knew it could have been a frame winner. I think the red might pass the pink, but it's by no means easy. But Jimmy White knows if he can knock it in, it could be a frame winner. Got terrific support here this afternoon. A shot which may well have offered him a passport to the frame. Pressure on Jimmy White here, but if he could clear the colours, what a roar we would have in the Crucible Theatre. Would have much preferred the cue ball to have remained slightly above the blue. It's not so much a question of getting on the pink, but getting on the pink in such a way you can hold for black. 23. Peter Edmonds lead to 6 4. Yes, well, a terrific comeback there by Jimmy White, and psychologically that will clearly give him an enormous boost. So, 6 4, the two opening frames, in fact, each lasting all of half an hour. We'll be back with further live coverage of Jimmy White against Peter Ebden after the news. Come back to the World Championships here in the Crucible Theatre in Sheffield. The second round coming to a close today. We'll be watching the match live, of course, between Jimmy White and Peter Ebden. 5-3 overnight, Peter Ebden went 6-3 in front, Jimmy pinched the 10th to go 6-4. The 11th frame currently in progress, it's uh, been underway for about four and a half minutes or so, but only 13-0 as you can see, while well, now 20 in Jimmy's favour. So let's uh, rejoin Dennis Taylor and Clive Everton. Ebden went in off, uh, attempting a thin cut from distance, left the red near this right corner pocket and uh, Ebden has been in his chair ever since. One red going in by intention, another by accident, but White disappointed to lose position, although the position was unpredictable. The cue ball carrying several reds. Yes, Clive, Jimmy, a victim of his own cue power there, generates terrific amount of power when he plays that particular type of shot it was just a matter of six inches too far that time
I've heard no call of a touching ball. If it was a touching ball position, white safety would be easy enough. Yellow ball. There's just a gap through to the yellow. Jimmy White, 18. Big frame, that last frame. If Peter Ebden had have opened up a four frame lead, I think he might just have pulled away from Jimmy, as it is, with just that two frame lead. I think we've got a real match on our hands here. Yes, it's the difference between uh, being able to play with a greater degree of freedom four frame lead so much more reassuring than a two you can afford to make a couple of mistakes and uh, you're still all right Peter Ebden has reached four finals on the circuit this season, but has won only one. That's the non-ranking Malta Grand Prix, beating John Higgins in the final. One. Bonus there, route through to initial red for white. Still have Eight. a little bit of sorting out to do there. The two reds are covering each other into the right corner. And the triangle of reds there are not straightforward. So it's a good chance, but he's just got to sort the position out here. Nine. Didn't get the angle on the blue that he wanted. The yellow is available. He's just looking to see if he can screw back and leave one of those three reds on, the triangle I mentioned. I think the one to the right might just pot. 14. Well, there you see it, and there's also a possible plant there, but I think he'll take this single red. At the worst, was always going to have red to left middle. Twenty-three. Should win the frame now. He's got them in the ideal situation. Already forty-five points in front. And just the confidence booster that Jimmy White needed, I think, clearing up in the previous frame to pinch it on the black. 29. Thirty. 
Yes, it's amazing how often those tense, important clearances are tide turners. It's been the case in this frame. 36. Thirty-seven. Forty-two. Already arithmetically past the post. 43. With that red. White has taken this frame winning chance very nicely. shot absolutely fantastic just watch the cue ball Seventy. what a clearance this would be the last three reds were all on cushions Seventy-five. This could be the first century of this match. And what a way to make a century. We've had all sorts of shots in the last minute or two. Seventy-eight. Eighty-seven. Pink and black <laughs> for the 173rd century. Ninety-three. Of White's career. Thank you. <laughs> A wonderful clearance. So many great shots in that break. Some of them occurred when he was actually past the winning post, but they were still great shots. It enables him to reduce his deficit to 5-6. And uh, possibly the most spectacular shot of all was the banana shot in potting yellow to get on the last red. Yes, he had to play it with a terrific amount of top spin, a little bit of side, and just look at the reaction on the cue ball to get in behind that red. That was something very special you witnessed there. Yes, lovely to see Jimmy White 
back to form. One of uh, a large number of centuries in this tournament, but his first in this match. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Frame 12, Jimmy White to Brick. So the mid-session interval coming up after this frame. And I think we'll uh, <laughs> see the strengths of Peter Ebden. He won't want to lose this frame. He'll want to keep his lead going into the interval. Jimmy certainly has put him under pressure, but uh, make no mistake, this gentleman can respond to pressure. He has a very strong character. Unlikely to be morally intimidated by a crowd strongly for his opponent, as most crowds are at Jimmy White matches. Peter sometimes has the cue ball cleaned. It depends on the type of shot he's going to play. It looks as if he's going to follow through here, so he's anticipating getting a possible kick. So just having it clean just to make sure. Don't know if it always works, but uh, Peter's happy with that method. Didn't cannon that uh, end red quite as he intended to leave one to the right corner. Well, as you can see now, not enough room to get to that red. So Peter trying to just work out where he wants to knock the first red so as he can possibly make the plant. And you've got a perfect picture of it there. Can he pull it off? Peter Ebden, 16. Well, hedged his bet by returning the cue ball behind the ball climb, but He's left quite a shot to nothing.
Fine. Made that pot look very easy. There was no real value in Jimmy rolling up behind the yellow there because the reds weren't opened enough. So it wouldn't have been putting Peter under a great deal of pressure as it is. He's given himself a chance here. Six. One might be able to have an angle to get into the pink and reds. Hadn't quite got the angle to do that, Eleven. but uh, we know the power he's got. This could disturb a few here. Well. Fifty. Looks as if he might be dead straight on the blue. It's not that bad, uh, even if he is, he's still got the red just above the pink there that he can take into the left corner. Just a matter of rolling through a few inches. Got a couple of options, but can't do a lot with the cue ball. There's one at the end of the bunch there that'll pot into the left corner as well. Twenty. Twenty-one. Developing another red while retaining position on blue. Twenty-six. Taking his time, Jimmy White. Very measured here. Not dashing around the table. Twenty seven. Yes, when he's been struggling for form earlier this season, he's often seemed hasty, as if he can't contain himself. He took his time 32. there, but he's come too far. 
That's just down to concentration there, Clive. He just lost his concentration just for the split second. I think he can still pop the red, but it's quite a thin cut. To The only problem when you do lose position it takes you a couple of shots to get back into prime position again. Needs another good shot here. The yellow seems to be the one that'll get him back to the red. The one that's near the pink is the only one he can play for. He has dropped on red to left corner. Missable. So a couple of shots after he lost prime position, he broke down altogether. Easy run to his next red. Snooker coming up here, surely. Green ball. <laughs> Developing the bunch of reds by means of the green, thus making his snooker potentially more creative. Just looking at it, that's a possible route somewhere along those lines to get to this red. Uh, it's not going to be easy, whichever way Jimmy takes it. He's looking at coming off the side cushion to get to the, the same red, but he's got to be very ca careful either way. Foul and a miss. Peter Ebden, four. escape not near enough in the opinion of referee John Williams Yes. Good refereeing this by Williams because one of the three balls in that little cluster is material to this shot. But 
I don't think uh, they were as well on before as they were when White's escape moved one of them. So the red which moved had to be replaced. Wow. Peter Ebden, six. But near enough. The purpose of the misrule, of course, is to cut out not so much deliberate fouls as insufficiently zealous attempts to escape from snookers when you can so easily leave a ball on. What? That was a very good pot, and uh, it was an even better position shot to leave the cue ball short of the balk line there, so that he was nicely on the brown or yellow. But the brown's the one that'll get him position, possibly on the one to the left of the green. Well, the one near the pink spot is available as well, so. Five. A couple of options there. Six. Ebden's snooker behind the green changed this frame. He obtained 15 points in penalties from that snooker and this opening. Well, actually, he played the green and left the snooker behind the yellow. Nine. Just stick with the blue, two reds, two blues, and the yellow. We put in 25 in front with 25 on the table. We also need the green, but it's an excellent chance. Twenty-two. He's just gone slightly the wrong side of the blue, so we'll have to leave a, a longer pot on the yellow. But 
but he certainly dug in in this frame. 27. Terrific powers of concentration and an awful lot of determination. Jimmy White uh, was promisingly going towards levelling the match at 6-all, having trailed 6-3. At the Ebden snooker turn the frame and now he needs only the green to leave white needing two snookers. Would have been on it easier if he hadn't just uh, made that thin contact on the green. Peter Ebden, 29. Even so, didn't expect him to miss it. <laughs> Unexpected reprieve for White, who trails by 25, but with 25 still on the table. Ebden sends the green round off two cushions. He's got to be careful that the green doesn't cannon the black. I don't think Jimmy can see enough of the green to double it back up the table, so he may have to just hit it. Well, he could manage a half ball contact, which wasn't bad. Good shot. Pink and brown, potentially snookering balls. Almost a snooker from Ebden. No time to risk the double. A snooker for Jimmy would be useful. He can only tie with all the colours at present. I think Peter has a safety shot on twice across the table with the green, avoid the cannon onto the black, and the green should finish on this top cushion. He's hit it too thick though.
could easily have turned out a lot worse for him than that. Tactical snooker from White. A trust to luck from Ebden. And the chance for Jimmy. Got to be a little bit careful. The natural angle would be to cannon into the black if he pots the green, so he's got a little bit of work to do with the cue ball. This is a chance that White didn't green. expect to have when Ebden attempted green with the rest, which would have left White needing two snookers. be a very tense finish to this frame before the mid-session interval. Twelve. Still pink and black to tie. It's all about the angle he has on the pink here, Clive. If it's just off straight, he can screw the white right back up onto the cushion to leave the black on. But if it's a little bit straight, he might be coming too close to the black. Let's see what happens. Right behind it would have been easier. This is quite an awkward little cut along the cushion. He's got to commit himself and just drop it in. Right clears from green to black to tie the frame. Extra black required. John Williams will spin the coin. You call heads. It's a chair. Thank you. White has won the toss and put Ebden in. Could be over the middle pocket. He's a little bit fortunate. Overhit that one. I don't think the double's on. Jimmy might have to just play safe. Yeah. It's in. Would have left Jimmy White needing two snookers. White cleared from green to black and added the tiebreak black to level at six all. Yes, the old crowd pleasing Jimmy White does it again. What a great session that's been for him. And at six all, they go off now for their break. We'll continue with live coverage, of course, when they return. Now, let me bring you up to date with the latest on the big story here at the World Championships. And, of course, the inquiry into the allegations that Ronnie O'Sullivan, the number three seed, assaulted a tournament official yesterday. At the request of uh, Ronnie's legal representation, 
That has now been put back till 8 o'clock tonight. So the inquiry will now be at 8 tonight. And, of course, O'Sullivan is scheduled to meet John Higgins in the first of the quarterfinals at 10.30 tomorrow morning. We will, of course, keep you posted. Now, let's uh, turn our attention to the other match being played here this afternoon, and that, of course, the game between Nigel Bond and James Watanar, last year's beaten final. Players have just uh, resumed, or are about to resume, after the mid-session interval. Fascinating match, this. Jimmy White against Peter Ebden. Ebden beginning 5-3. Jimmy's won, if you like, the first four frames of the session, 3-1. So now they're all square at six frames all. Just remind you, it's... 13, first to 13 to go through to the last eight. Some more terrific snooker to come then. Let's rejoin Dennis Taylor and Clive Everton. An hour and 43 minutes playing time for the first four frames this afternoon, which is a long time for a Jimmy White match. Yeah. And uh, four long drawn out frames here could leave not much of an interval between this afternoon's session and their final session this evening which starts at table all nice and clean again brushed uh, at the mid-session interval gets rid of all the chalk marks and finger marks That's a pot of a very confident Jimmy White. Plenty of topspin on the cue ball. Really zip through the object ball on contact. Blue ball. Pink and black tied up, so Pink. Jimmy will have to concentrate for the moment on the blue. Seven. <coughs> if clearances and close finishes are important, as they frequently are in matches of this type, Good omen for White is that he made two important clearances before the interval. Twelve. Thirty. Thirty-six to win the second frame of the day on the black. Thirty-five to tie the last frame that we saw before the interval. And in that case he later added the tie break black. Those two frame wins, 18. separated by a brilliant 100 clearance. So all the necessary ability is in there to win this match. Nineteen. 
does play that shot so well, even with the rest. Terrific cue power there. And he's freed the pink. Although he's the wrong side of the blue. Still should be able to get onto a red. Spot on. Twenty-four. And he's getting the little flicks, Clive. That's twice he's had a little cannon off the blue to leave him in perfect position. Make the best of them. They won't last forever. That's one of the nicest ladies you could ever wish to meet, Elsie Holdsworth. She's missed virtually no sessions here since 1977. A charming lady. 31. Thirty-seven. Got a deathly hush at the moment, live over the crucible. I think the crowd are engrossed in this play now. 44. A very classy half century this has been. Fifty one. Yes, Clive, when you think that the pink and black were tied up when Jimmy started this effort, it's been perfection. few problems now for Jimmy not straightforward and this red that he's taking on it's similar to the black he potted in the previous frame before the mid-session interval to force the respotted black Jimmy White 58 overcut it The 
five reds that are around the black spot are all covering each other. So Peter's got to get good position when potting the one that's over the pocket. He really needs to get on the pinker field to have a chance to bring a couple of them into play. If he goes down for the blue, the pink is blocking the path for the cannon off the blue to the reds. So this is not straightforward by any means. Ebden's taking a long time to plot his shot sequence and to steady himself for this important effort. One. Should he lose this frame, he'll go one behind for the first time since he was down 3-2. And he's got some leeway to make up. Didn't judge the cannon. Might still be on a red, but it looks very tight. Seven. You had to just play that a little, little bit more pace. He would have been on the red that he's closest to there. Don't think he can see enough of that. Certainly not to pot it. Peter Ebden, seven. Thinner than intended. Chance for Ebden, albeit with the black still hemmed in. One. Well, Peter took the risk there and tried to disturb the black, which he did do, but it's always relying a little bit on a good fortune to get position on the color. He's got the pink in the middle pocket, but it's far from easy. Now, will he commit himself to taking that pink on? Be bound to finish on a red. Big shot. Pink ball. One. Well, that was amazing. Gentlemen, the stewards have been asked to remove people who shout out. So they'll show the exit door. It's up to you. Played at a dead weight, and it was looking good all the way. But just caught the near knuckle.
It couldn't have been much more straightforward for White to clinch the frame. Seven. Hebden knew that he was staking everything on that slow pink to middle. And this will be the fourth frame in succession 30. that White has won. Thereby improving from 6 3 down to 7 6 up. Yes, it's funny how the sequences have gone that live. 20. Jimmy lost the first two, won the next three, lost the next two, won the next three. 21. Twenty-five, touching ball. It's Jimmy White, twenty-five on the pitch. The earlier fifty-eight and uh, the clinching twenty-five gives Jimmy White the thirteenth frame and a seven-six lead. And suddenly Jimmy White's in the lead in what is becoming an absorbing game of snooker. We're going to stay with it, obviously. We had intended to bring you Shot of the Championship around now, but I'm sure you'd want us to stay with us, and we'll save Shot of the Championship for one of our evening programmes. But, John Virgo, you've been watching Jimmy for a long, long time. He's yeah. beginning to play very well. He's hitting the ball really sweet now. Yeah. He's been hitting the ball well all season. I've been playing a lot of shows with him. It's just the confidence that he was lacking. And I think when he uh, pinched that frame, and then after that he made a century break, and I think all his old confidence has come back. Uh, Peter's had chances, a uh, risky pink, but that's the type of game that Peter plays. Uh, I still think there's an awful lot of snooker. I think uh, it could go all the way. Uh, but as I say at the moment, I'm just pleased to see Jimmy playing his best form. It's interesting to hear you say that he's been hitting the ball well all season because by his standard, he's had an awful season. And people would say, with all Jimmy's experience, if he's playing well in practice, why on earth isn't he doing it in tournaments? Yeah, well, unfortunately, Jimmy's a bit of an enigma. Jimmy doesn't use his experience. Jimmy can only win, unfortunately, when he plays well. Hmm. He, he's not a type of player like Steve Davis can rely on his safety because he doesn't play that type of game. He's an attacking player. So if he doesn't play well, then uh, invariably he's going to give his opponent chances. Mm. So experience has got nothing to do with it with Jimmy <laughs> whatsoever. Yeah, well, it's been a, a fascinating game. Jimmy in front now, that 13th frame might just be awfully important. They've both gone out of the arena just to take a little bit of a break. But uh, this, I think, beforehand you would have said Peter Ebden had to be a pretty strong favourite, John, wouldn't you? Oh, yes, but as I did say at the time, there's not many people got a better record at the Crucible than Jimmy White. And... Uh, Horses for courses. I knew he'd rise to the occasion. It was whether or not his confidence could allow him to stay in the match. And he's not only in the match, he's in front now. And suddenly there are questions being asked of Peter Ebden. Here's frame 14. Jimmy to break. Yes, horses for courses. And uh, the Crucible has been a pretty good course for Jimmy White. It's 1983 since uh, he lost in the first round. And since then, he's never lost earlier than the quarter-finals. That includes six trips to the final, but as yet, no successful one. Strong character, Ebden. He's lost the last four frames, but he's lost none of his self-belief. Eight. 
Well, Peter I'm not sure whether he got a bad contact. I think he might have had a little kick there. Let's just have a look. Very rarely a player would miss a pot that easy. The cue balls had a good clean, so that indicates that there was a bad contact there. That one wriggled in the pocket two or three times. Blue ball. Six. That must have been very disappointing for Peter Ebden to have potted a terrific long red off the break-off shot and then see that bad contact make him miss a very simple pot. And it's things like that that can turn matches. He's got a long way to go. And as John Virgo says, I think this one could go right to the wire. Thirty. Jimmy White special coming up here. We know the cue power he has. Just keep your eye on this one. I thought he would have gone into that with a little bit more power and a little bit more screw. Maybe the angle just wasn't there for him. Yes, yeah, sometimes it's policy to go as hard as you can into the heart of the bunch, sometimes not so hard into the side of the bunch to try and just tickle a few out. Jimmy White, 20. But nothing <coughs> came out that wasn't missable. Sixteen. Peter Ebden just proving that he's got quite a bit of cue power as well with that deep screw shot. Seventeen.
23. Well, he might have an angle here to pop the red and just slide off the other reds and maybe develop a couple and finish nicely on the black. 24. He's developed one. Well, maybe when Ebden has potted this red, another red will become potable off the bottom of the bunch to the other corner. Thirty-two. That's well spotted Clive, the back red pots. And if he's got an angle, he could develop another few reds here. Just depends on the angle he's got on this pot. Having the cue ball cleaned again. Great chance now. Green ball. Jimmy White asked the question. Peter Ebden is responding. Yes, Ebden badly needed to hold firm here after losing the last four frames. Forty-four. You can't say that's been because of an unduly high number of errors from him. White has played very well to put that sequence together. Which included a couple of close ones. 51. Fifty-two. Well, as you can see, the three reds are all tied up now, but Ready 40 points in front, black to follow. He only needs one of the reds, and he should be able to develop it here. Fifty-nine. The straight red to right corner. All important in this frame. Peter Ebden, 59. That was a big surprise. <laughs> Ebden normally pops the pressure balls, but he's missed one frame ball already today. And this is another. <laughs> Two frames ago. Ebden missed the green with the rest, which would have left White needing two snookers. And 
if he also loses this frame, he won't have any difficulty in identifying the key moment. Jimmy White just proving there what a good tactical and safety player he can be when needed. Okay. That good safety shot that Jimmy White played previously has given him an opening here. One. Good thinking from Jimmy White there. He really wants to take the blue here. Yellow or green wouldn't have been any use to him. Forty-one the difference. Red, pink, red, black, all the colours would do. Seven. What a blow this would be to Peter Ebden's confidence. 40. He should have sealed it. And White should have uh, ideally have been a little straighter on this red. I think he still can hold black ball position, or if not for black, then for pink. Fifty. He's just run himself into a little needless difficulty though and he's just checking out his arithmetic which can play you tricks in the heat of a tight finish to a frame. Jimmy was very, very fortunate there. The white looked like it was going in the middle 21. pocket. It hit both angles, and he's finished perfect on the yellow. Just watch this here. Looks certain to go in. Both knuckles. They're there for the taking now. Twenty-three. Twenty-six. Ebden had an almost straight red to the corner, which would have left White needing a snooker. Thirty. Thirty-five. <laughs> Forty-one. Forty-eight. And Forty-eight clearance with a couple of adventurous moments gives Jimmy White an eight-six lead. Ebden's two behind for the first time.
and knows full well that he should have won that frame. Frame that looked for all the world as if it was going Peter Ebden's way, and what a huge bonus that must be for Jimmy John. Well, yeah, I mean, it looked. Uh, Peter Ebden seems to respond. You know, he got the chance, and I can't believe he missed that frame ball red. I mean, it was amazing. Yeah, what kind of psychological damage does that do? I know it's still close, and there's still quite a distance to go. But Peter must be sitting thinking, "What have I done?" Yeah, well, the thing is, uh, Jimmy didn't play a good shot off the last red, and uh, it, it just shows you, not only is Jimmy getting chances that you didn't think he was going to get, and then he has a little run of the ball like that. Yes, I mean, well, the white off the pink, for example. Oh, yeah, mm. and, and to hit the two knuckles of the middle pocket and finish perfect then, I mean, was uh, mm. unbelievable. So, with mm. the run of the ball and that mm. bad miss of Peter, I mean, Jimmy must be on a big high, and mm. Peter, well, he's got a drag something from somewhere because he must be wondering why he's two frames behind. Oh, there he is. He's a, a very confident character. He's got uh, tremendous reserves of concentration. But uh, he's a very thoughtful snooker player just at the moment, Peter Ebden. Remember, he took the first of the afternoon to go 6-3 in front. He certainly had chances to go 7-3. He lost that one to go 6-4. And since then, he's lost another four frames. So suddenly it's 8-6 in Jimmy White's favour. And, of course, the crowd are now very much in behind Jimmy, John. And that's a factor too, isn't it? Well, that is a factor. And also, I think that, that any snooker player, I mean, it's a lonely seat out there for Peter at the moment. Jimmy's just gone out of the arena. So he's got all these things to cope with. And uh, at the end of the day, Jimmy's starting to play well. He's been let off the hook, as you yeah. say. He should yeah. have been 7-3. Peter, well, had an easy green for the, the frame and finished up playing a shot for nothing. Yeah. And Mr. Red like that, that's two frames. A two-frame swing is a big one. That's right. We'll be coming to the end of, of this transmission, but, of course, uh, it really is set up for tonight, however the last two frames of this session go, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Mm. I mean, Peter Edmund's not playing bad. Mm. So there it is, 8-6, and fascinating stuff. Frame 15, Ebden to break. The one thing he mustn't do is dwell on what's happened and uh, the chances that he's missed. Two frame balls in the 13th frame and the last frame that we've just seen. It was very interesting there, Clive, that uh, Jimmy left the arena, Peter Ebden stayed in his seat. Blue ball. Peter normally goes out after each frame. Jimmy White's one. I've played Peter quite a few times, and it's his normal practice. If not every frame, certainly every other frame, he tends to just go out of the arena. Well, we're in the early stages of this 15th frame then, and uh, Jimmy White from 6-3 behind is suddenly 8-6 in front, and a really tremendous match in prospect. We, of course, are back at 8.50 tonight, a little bit earlier than usual, over on BBC Two. We'll certainly see the continuation of this one, and indeed the final session of Ken Doherty against Darren Morgan. That's more snooker from the Crucible, 10 tonight tonight. Bye-bye. One. Let the cue ball slip away slightly there, just hampered by the red, but 
Shouldn't be any problem. And now he's hampered slightly when the black goes back on its spot. Sixteen. Looks as if he'll have to uh, add up for the blue this time. But he should be back in prime position in a couple of shots. Seventy. Twenty-three. <coughs> Thirty. Thirty-one. <coughs> Little lapse in concentration again. 38. The red will still pot, but can't play for the black, so we have to cannon into the other red. Still should be able to hold it for a color. 39. <laughs> Probably worked to Jimmy's advantage there, now that he's opened the other four reds. Well now, 44. he played for the red, I'm sure, that's to the right of the black. Can he pot the one that's by the pink? He could. 45. And, uh, well, there's a chance of winning this frame now from this. 52. smile from the crowd uh, Jimmy having a look at a shot one of our cameras just got a little bit in his way it's quite tight at the crucible theater here when we've got two tables not a lot of room with the curtain in the middle and the cameras so close there Jimmy reversed back a bit just to have a look at the situation 53 but we do get used to them, and uh, when you're out there playing, you don't notice them. Well, the flaws, but I don't think Jimmy played to kiss that red like that, but uh, he will not be displeased. Sixty-one. So the pink uh, and one more red. Sixty-seven. So Jimmy really punishing Peter for that uh, error of judgment on just trying to pinch a bit and pot a red. Seventy-four. <coughs> Seventy-five. We had uh, two or three half-hour frames 
this afternoon that this evening they've set off like a house on fire. Century break from Peter Ebden 80. in the opening frame. Jimmy White already at 80. Eighty-eight. Well, the red in the middle will go to the far corner. It hasn't, but it really doesn't matter. Eighty-eight on the frame. Jimmy Great. White. Eighty-eight break from Jimmy White. Regains his two frames lead. Ten-eight. Just between frames, let me update you what's been happening on the other table. And Darren Morgan, the Welshman, has got through against Ken Doherty of Ireland, 13 frames to five. And Darren Morgan will now play the champion, Stephen Hendry, in a quarter final. Coming up in this programme, your first chance to have a go at shot of the championship, where you can join us next Sunday and Monday, VIP trip here for all the final. But now continuing with White and Ebden, it's frame 19, it's just underway. The Reds are all over the place, and this is Ebden who's in with a five-point lead. Clever shot playing for the red that's by the black. That will open the black up. Eight. That is hard and a bit of a flutter there. He almost overscrewed that and dropped in behind the red, but he's okay. Looks as if Peter spotted something on the red ball on his way around, so having it cleaned. <coughs> He's got to keep his concentration. It's uh, very difficult to run out of position with the reds like this. Sixteen. Twenty-three. 
Well, that's definitely a 24. lapse of concentration. That was a terrible shot he played there. Canning into the other red. Peter Ebden, 24. Our referee just indicating there to one of the people to raise the curtain in the middle of the arena. The other match finished, so the players have got the whole of the crucible to themselves now. but frankly his opponent should never have left him the chance it was a bad shot from Peter Ebden not getting tied up to the black and the lead is only 28 points and uh, well, as you can see Reds pretty well all in good position four And it's often easier to make the break of six or seven reds when half of them are gone. So much more space to work with. Five. Jimmy just losing his way a little. He's still on a choice of reds, but not uh, quite how he would like to have been. Twenty four. Twenty five. can't see any problems with the next 31. couple of reds. The one up just past the middle pocket there towards the cushion could cause Jimmy a slight problem. 32. Bad misjudgment by Peter Ebden allowed this chance for Jimmy. Yeah. Forty. Bad contact there. It doesn't really affect 
the next shot. Jimmy has an angle on the blue. He could screw down past the green with a little bit of side and maybe drop onto this red. If he dropped in behind it, it'd be nice. Well, Jimmy, Jimmy knew White, that was 45. the possible frame winning shot. Didn't seem to do anything particularly wrong, just a misjudgment. Didn't move on the shot. He wasn't particularly comfortable over the edge of the pocket before he took that shot and uh, that might have still been in his mind. However, it's Peter now with a chance to... Uh, well, it's a difficult red, but it's certainly a chance. just come back far enough for the green and the brown may not be a problem for Peter Ebden it's the right side of the table for him being right handed Four. Six. Uh, has he left a nice angle? Just to screw over behind that brown. Should be able to do it. Nine. <coughs> well, not as easy now with the rest. As it would have been if the cue ball had finished dead in line with the brown. It's a big frame this now. Jimmy had uh, a three frame lead in his sight a couple of minutes ago. So once blue and pink, but he's just slightly the wrong side of the blue, but probably got enough angle not to uh, cause him too much trouble. Peter Ebden, 18. Well, Quietly, thank you, gentlemen. In the final analysis in this match, it'll be the person who holds his nerve the best that may well win it. And Peter, who is renowned for his strong nerves, certainly hit that one much harder than was needed. And uh, I think he just felt a bit, a little bit there, Dennis. This is what we call uh, he twitched on it, and we all do it. 
And Jimmy's twitched on that one. Well, what's going to happen next? Does he clip the pink in? Settling himself down. Looks at the scoreboard. He's got to take the pink on. That they time he didn't to it. Frame. No. I think he got a bit excited there. So, the crowd not quite as loud as Peter, but he's only one frame behind now at 10-9. <laughs> and Ian Johnson enjoyed that. He enjoyed the next as well. He's gone level at 10 frames all as they go to their interval. To a finish here tonight. Don't miss it. Just time, as I promised you, for our first look at shot of the championship. Lots of prizes. The big prize, the trip down here Sunday and Monday. Hotels, tickets, everything paid for. It's the thing. Unmistakably, Peter Ebden shouting out the story so far of his Embassy World Championship match with Jimmy White tonight here. One that's already enthralled the Crucible and hopefully you at home. Ten all in this programme to a finish. It's already a classic. As for the news about Ronnie O'Sullivan and the inquiry into his alleged assault on a snooker official, that is still going on in a hotel here in Sheffield, even this late hour. You'll have news of it in this programme as soon as we get any news at all. But action on the table. Jimmy White and Peter Ebden. What a match this has become. Ten frames all, as I said. They shared the next two. 57 by Ebden and 90 by Jimmy White. That takes us to frame 23 as we join it with commentators Ray Edmonds and Dennis Taylor. White is on a break of 44. Forty-five. Needs one more decent split after potting the blue. The angle's there. It hasn't worked out for him. He's not going to kill the frame off. 50. That little smile tells you what Jimmy thinks of the outcome of that shot. Well, with a 49-point lead, it wouldn't be so bad if he could play a good safety shot to the to the other end. But uh, that red down there behind the brown is presenting that, so or rather preventing that. So. Jimmy, a little unlucky there. Jimmy White, 50. So warm applause. But he's left his opponent half chance to the far corner. We've had so many twists and turns to this match. Eight. What's going to happen next? Nine. Now he can just drop onto the red there, the front one of the little triangle, and when he pops that, it will open the other two up for the left corner pocket. Fifteen. 
Well, he's played that too well. It was just off straight, and to force that angle 22. was a, a very good shot indeed. He's still on the red, but uh, he's going to need his little extension again just to reach it. So, uh, Jimmy White sitting in his chair, and he was a little bit careless at the end of that break he made. And uh, he left his opponent a half chance, but it was a super pot, and the perfect position that Peter got is uh, giving him his reward. Well, the red nearly didn't drop, but worse. And you don't very often see Peter Ebden show any sign of emotion, but I think that red has blocked the black. He shows emotion when he wins a frame, but not when he has a bad kiss or a bad shot. Not easy to play a good safety shot here. Peter doesn't want to knock any of the other colours safe because he's behind. Is he taking the green on and trying to move the red, I wonder? Brave shot at this stage. That is brilliant. Now, he looked away as if he had a, a bit of bad luck, 26. but I think if he checks where the cue ball's finished, he might be able to pop that red in the right middle pocket. It's very tight. Well... 27. That was an amazing shot he took on in the green. And if he does manage to win this frame, uh, I don't know what reaction we'll get from Peter. Cool. It's just incredible stuff we're watching. <coughs> Thirty-two. <coughs> I'm sure Jimmy thought he'd got a little bit of a reprieve when that red covered the black. It's still not over yet. Peter trails by 17 <coughs> points, but uh, after the last few shots, it looks very straightforward. Thirty-three. 
if he does manage to clear up here you you won't see a better clearance under such pressure 39 Jimmy was a little bit unlucky, cannoned into five reds and didn't put one on. Forty-eight. Fifty-three. So, doesn't need the black, just the pink. Peter Ebden to win. Jimmy White a little unlucky, but Peter Ebden now just wants one more. 12-11 in front. 24th frame, Jimmy White to break. 54. And that's the worst break-off shot that Jimmy White has made in this match. He knows it. seen Peter miss many potable balls this evening or for that matter throughout this match one Eighteen. And suddenly, Ray, you can hear a pin drop in the Crucible Theatre. Everyone's enthralled by this encounter. Ninety. Twenty-six. So, any look this time for Jimmy White. There is a loose red out to the right, but he's got the perfect angle to go into the reds. And 
that's not bad. That's not bad. 34. Might just be a little bit awkward queuing, Ray. Got the easy red in the middle pocket, but he's hampered slightly. Obviously, the red just behind the pink. 40. We'll go to the left. He's got to be a little bit careful here. If he pots the red, it looks as if it's a natural angle to cannon onto the red, just to the right of a little bunch of reds and that's what he's worried about if he cannons full ball onto that it won't leave him an easy colour 41 Shot, but it's taken the cue ball a little further away from the red than he would have liked. Forty-eight. And this is, once again, remarkable and stuff 54. under this type of pressure to produce this sort of break. Incredible. 55. Jimmy White, 55. Well, it was always going just to the far angle. A little bit slower, he might just have fallen in, but worse to follow, he's got perfect on the red. So we've seen some great clearances from Peter Ebden. Last frame particularly, can he do it again? 1. Well, the adrenaline's really pumping in Peter Ebden. He overscrewed that by some 18 inches. Wanted to be on the blue. To be able to pot it and move the four reds. He's still going to take it on, but it's not as easy a pot. Blue ball. Peter Ebden, one. Will you please cut out the crying out, please? It upsets the players, ruins the concentration, spoils the match. Please don't do it. Yes, that was quite a difficult shot.
this was really a wonderful. Well, we haven't got time to show it again. Jimmy already down, but that was a wonderful example of cue power from Jimmy White. And now 61 points in front, 59 on the table. Seven. settles the issue so it always looked as if it might go down to the wire well 62 points 51 on the table Jimmy White 8 he should have done enough really to earn that final frame he had 12 all and like in the first round Jimmy White is down to the last round to survive in the Embassy Championship of the World. Peter Ebden to break. This decides it. I think Jimmy might just have a go at this red. But in these situations, it comes down to a battle of nerve as much as anything else. Both these plenty. Both these players have got plenty of it. They're, uh, they've both got good records in tight situations. Peter Ebden's had many close battles, but certainly not as many close battles at the Crucible Theatre. Certainly not as many as his opponent, Jimmy White. He looks pretty cool and relaxed, but inside, it's very difficult to describe how he'll be feeling. Seven. Well, in the last nine frames, all bar one, there's been a 50 break plus. Both players have played splendidly. And Eight. either player would give a lot to get a 50 in this deciding frame. being the wrong side of the blue there he's had to leave 30. a little bit longer range pot and at this sort of stage you want to try and keep it as simple as possible
14. I was just thinking, Ray, people that write in the newspapers and say that snooker's boring, they should get themselves down to the Crucible Theatre, into the audience here, they would soon change their mind. Yes, well, we're just before <coughs> 11 o'clock and uh, nobody's moved, absorbed in this battle. as we are. sure if the red that's to the left of the black is available into the right corner it looks as if it is that would be a good red for Peter to get onto. <coughs> this will open the black up 25. into both corner pockets Taking every precaution here, having the cue ball cleaned again. And the red just in front of the pink is also available into the left corner, so this is a decent chance here. Twenty six. The person who's beaten Jimmy White at the Crucible has gone on to win the World Championship. Five times, of course, in the Good. final. It's noticeable that Peter Ebden 41. stays down on the shot after he's played it, keeps his chin on the cue until the ball disappears into the pocket. Forty-two.
so he's finished the wrong side of the blue. But he can get through to the pink if there is a red that'll go to this left corner. I think the red at the top there, just to the left, will go. But uh, Peter having a good look to see if the pink would be in the way, where it would spot. And it looks to me as if it won't go on its own spot for sure. Pink. Pink ball. Well, Peter was hoping to put quite a few reds on Rainbow. they're open but it's not by any means straightforward here Fifty-three. And I think that might be the shot that wins Peter this frame and match. <coughs> yes, Ray, that one little cannon he played there has opened everything up. This is a brilliant performance. Sixty. Sixty-one. And this crucible crowd know that that. Got, uh, Jimmy White at the snooker's required stage. Sixty-nine. Well, Jimmy White came to the Crucible this year, desperate to win to retain his 
top 16 place. He did that in a nail-biting finish. And he's given his all in this match. But uh, Peter Ebden has just proved too strong and too consistent. Couldn't wish to see a better match. Blue ball. Yes, Red, virtually come down to the toss of a coin. It's just a pity there has to be a 74. loser. But what a match we've witnessed here. Seventy-five. <coughs> Rumble. Play Steve Davis. <laughs> Intriguing to see how much this has taken out of him. He's now relaxed. He knows he's brave. Yes, that was a little bit of banter. There was one spectator who had to rush off. And Peter said, <laughs> Why now? I think, Ray, what you've got to admire here, he's won the match, and here he is, wandering around the table as if he still had it all to do. Just shows you the concentration. He wants to go out and making a century break. to win his first round match he's had to play his best snooker to beat Jimmy White because Jimmy White has played his best snooker of the season here 98 105 110 and I think it was uh, frame 19 when Peter showed such tremendous release of emotions that was the one I think that set the tone for the finish of this match. That was the most important one. <laughs> and uh, Jimmy throws the towel in. Yeah. The handshake. It really has been a wonderful match played in the most sporting manner. And Peter Ebden's going to take some stopping on this form. He's through to the quarterfinals, beating the crucible favourite, Jimmy White, by 13 frames to 12. One of the great matches here, and it's Peter Ebden versus Steve Davis in the quarterfinal. As for Ronnie O'Sullivan, the inquiry at the hotel here in Sheffield has just ended. There's Ronnie O'Sullivan, and it's been going on for hours now with the disciplinary committee. 
of the WPBSA and although no official statement has yet been uh, released, there's Jeff Folds, part of the disciplinary committee, I uh, can actually tell you, and I've just been told by Jeff Folds, that Ronnie O'Sullivan will be allowed to continue in the Embassy World Championship, which means he plays John Higgins, the joint second favourite, tomorrow morning at 10.30. No other details, fines, anything else, but Ronnie O'Sullivan has not been banned. And I'm just hearing something else. He has had a two-year ban, but it's suspended for two years. A two-year ban, but suspended for two years. But it means he does play tomorrow. He plays John Higgins tomorrow morning here at 10.30. So we're down to the last eight, the Embassy Championship World, and that includes O'Sullivan. See you tomorrow.